This is Too Far Enterprises with a segment on Fannie Lou Hammer, a black activist in Mississippi, 1968. 16 years later, this is still relevant and pertinent to our situation. I don't know if you can handle the truth, but I'm going to actually put her face up and I'm going to let you listen to her words. All behind trying to vote and not trying to live free in America. So what the young people are saying now, give us a chance to be young men respected as a man. As we know, this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't gonna have it either because we gonna tear it up. That's what they say. And people ought to understand that. I, I don't see why they don't understand it. They know what they've done to us all across this country. They know what they've done to us. This country is desperately sick, and man is on the critical list. You see, in this struggle, some people say that, well, she doesn't talk too good. This type of education that we get here, you won't talk too good. The type of education that we get in the state of Mississippi will make your mind so narrow it won't coordinate with our big bodies. Now, the question I raise, is this the America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, where people are being murdered, lynched, and killed because we want to register and vote? Some of the white people will tell us, well, I don't believe in integration, but he has been integrating at night a long time. If he hadn't been, it wouldn't be as many light-skinned Negroes as it is in here today. The 17th chapter of Acts and the 26th verse said, has made of one blood all nations. So whether you are black as a skillet or white as a sheep, we are all made from the same blood and we are all on our way. And it's time for you to wake up because you see a lot of people say, oh, they are afraid of integration. But the white man is not afraid of integration, not with his kids. He's afraid of his wife's kids because he's got them all over the place. Because some of his kids just might be my second cousin. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sin is the beginning to reproach America today and we want what's rightfully ours. And it is no need of running and no need of saying, honey, I'm not going to get in this mess because if you were born in America with a black face, you were born in the mess. Do you think anybody that would stand out in the dark to shoot me and to shoot other people would call, would you call that a brave person? It's a shame before God that people will let hate not only destroy us, but it will destroy them. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. And today, America is divided against itself because they don't want us to have even the ballot here in Mississippi. If we had been treated right all these years, they would not be afraid of us to get the ballot. People will go to different places and say, the Negroes, until the outside agitators came in, were satisfied. But I've been dissatisfied ever since I was six years old. I remember my mother worked for one measly dollar and a quarter a day. And you couldn't say that was satisfaction. But to be truthful tonight, I first wished I was white. Some of you wished that too. They were not doing nothing, but still had money and clothes. We were working year in and year out and wouldn't get to go to school but four months out of the year. I don't like bring, bringing politics into the church, but when he says this, it makes me sick because he's telling a big lie because every dollar bill got a politician on it and the preachers love it. You know, I used to have so much respect for teachers and preachers. I would be so nervous when I was around them, but since I found out that they are two of the scariest things that we got in Mississippi. How can you actually trust a man and have respect for him 
if he'll tell you to trust in God, but he doesn't trust in him, himself. We want leaders in our community. And what people will say is, well, if we can get rid of Fannie Lou, we can get rid of trouble. But what they don't know is, freedom is like eating cancer. If you kill me, it will break out all over the place. All you criticize us when you're at home and you're worried to death when we try to find out about our people. If you had treated us as human beings in America, you wouldn't be trailing us now to find out what we're trying to do over here in West Africa. Yes, a lot of people will roll their eyes at me today, but I'm going to tell you just like it is, it's time. There's so much hypocrisy in this society, and if we want America to be a free society, we have to stop telling lies, that's all. Because we're not free, and you know we're not free. You're not free in Harlem. I've gone to a lot of big cities, and I've got my first city to go to where a man wasn't standing with his feet on this black man's neck. But this is something we're going to have to learn to do and quit saying that we are free in America when you know we're not free. You're not free in Harlem. The people in Chicago are not free. The people in Pitt, uh, Pittsburgh or Philadelphia are not free either. Most places are a Mississippi in disguise. It is my goal for the cause to give these Negro children a decent education in the state of Mississippi and give them something that they've never had. Then I know my life won't be in vain because not only do we need a change in the state of Mississippi, but we need a change here in Harlem and everywhere. It's time for every American citizen to wake up because now the whole world is looking at America's society. I was in jail when Mega Evers was killed. What I'm trying to point out now is when you take a very close look at American society, it is time to question things. We have made an appeal for the President of the United States and the Attorney General to please protect us in Mississippi. And I can't understand how it's out of their power to protect people in Mississippi. They can't do that. But when a white man is killed in the Congo, they send people over there. And you always hear this long sob story. You know it takes time. For 300 years, we've given them time. And I've been tired so long. Now I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we want change. We want a change in this society in America because you see, we can no longer ignore the facts and getting our children to say and sing, oh say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail? What do we have to hail here? The truth is the only thing that's going to free us. And you know this whole society is sick. They were just trying to be able to vote. Now we're able to vote, but now we need quick pro quo, something for something, not to just vote for anything and anybody. We need to respect hers and our ancestors' sacrifice and to make sure that they didn't die in vain. So we get something for our vote. We make sure that our communities, our children, and even ourselves are taken care of. And this will become necessary to unite and vote as one. But understand this, there are gonna be some segments of our society that we are not going to count in our numbers because they are just like this man I saw not long ago. I think his name was Woodson, and he was talking anti-reparations. I don't think reparations is the correct name. We are owed a debt, and we need to collect on our debt. We need to be active debt collectors. This is Too Far Enterprises, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I would like to put out more content like this, and I'm not embarrassed about 
Fannie Lou Hammer. 